I want to talk about fast crew supply vessels because recently there's been uh, in increased interest in these vessels. Um, they are commercial vessels and they are being converted as yacht support vessels and standalone expedition yachts. And in particular, um, <clears throat> Domin has been uh, doing a brilliant job in promoting these uh, sort of wedge-shaped fast crew supply vessels. And they've been building these for about 20 years, but they brought one to the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show a couple of years ago and it created a big uh, stir and everybody got all excited. This one here is uh, in a little video being offered for $13.9 million converted. And there it is, got a big crane, it's got uh, some toys. Um, it virtually has, you know, very little going on up here because it is uh, wedge shaped. It's called the Axe Bow, and I did videos on these. It doesn't really have the gross tonnage or the capacity that you would expect in a hull this length, and that's because they're going for speed. They were originally built to get the crews out to the rigs fast. Time is money to the operators of these vessels, and so they put a lot of power in them. Uh, they're capable of going 25 to 30 knots. So this is what they look like in the workboat configuration um, again you see the first third or a little bit more of the hull is uh, up there in the v-shape it's got a nice aft deck so they're actually uh, quite well suited for conversion as is often the case the Europeans and the Americans are building the same boats uh, for the same purpose to uh, service the offshore oil industry. So these are the fast supply boats. This is an example that's probably a 180 footer. I'm not sure it could be 200. And these are the boats that are built down in Louisiana. And there are uh, probably a couple of hundred of these that have been built and maybe about a hundred of the Domins. And I'm not sure of those numbers, but I think that's about right. Over the, And this is over the last 20 years. Uh, if you go into Apollo Duck, which uh, we all do from time to time. Check out uh, what sort of uh, strange equipment is for sale. Um, you see more and more of these. Uh, you see more and more of these fast crew supply boats. But uh, oh yeah, here's a, a you know 179 feet. It's DP2. Most of them are dynamic positioning DP2, 4.2 million. But that one, for instance, is built in Vietnam. So um, and it's in Africa. So. I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure that's a great deal. Here's another one here, built in Brazil, uh, five and a half million. You got to go to Brazil. Uh, here's a USA one. Here's some nice Jeeps down here. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I've been aboard the Domin boats and I uh, followed the, the uh, sales and the pricing on these fast crew supply boats as they get converted. And it is certainly, um, captured my interest and one thing I've never done is gone down to Louisiana where these are all made and where they operate from into the Gulf of Mexico they're also operated in Mexico Brazil um, Africa and Southeast Asia so th these are these are really well engineered well built rugged offshore vessels and so uh, it was high time to go check it out and that's what I did and that's what I want to report on here. So if you go down to Louisiana this is what it looks like. Uh, a lot of places are still beat up by the hurricane and other places are looking pretty good. The maritime industry in Louisiana is enormous with approximately 50,000 people employed in building, crewing, managing, and operating ships globally from Louisiana. Within the overall maritime sector, the fast crew supply vessels are built by specialized shipyards that tend to be family owned. These are modest sized facilities and they have been building these for over 30 years, most of them. These vessels were originally built as crew only boats and they were probably only up to 150 feet. Over time, the oil companies needed vessels that could also carry piping and mud and extra fuel and extra water to the offshore rigs that were now as much as 200 miles offshore. And so the vessels became larger, more robust. The new generation was now carrying 80 to 100 passengers. 
They were carrying heavy loads of drill pipes. They were carrying drill water, fuel for the rig. And on top of that, they all had to have dynamic positioning, DP2. And they were subject to increased class regulations and coast, US Coast Guard regulations. What is also a key factor is that all of these shipyards were competing head on against each other to get these big contracts from the oil companies. So they were very competitive, very economical and efficient builders. What is immediately apparent here in Louisiana is that supply has outpaced demand and thus the opportunity. And so let's dive in here and have a look at some of these boats. This is a 184 foot fast cruise supply vessel built in 2012 by Bro Brothers. Uh, for the Chuest organization and they own it, uh, they crew it, they operate it, it's currently laid up. <clears throat> These boats have a beam of 30 to 36 feet usually. They've got that lo high load bearing, large open aft deck. So on a conversion, this gives you over 100 feet by up to 30 feet of buildable space for new accommodations and to house your toys, tenders, and still have plenty of room for a helipad. This is a no-nonsense bridge with great visibility. It's got all the uh, DP controls and all of the state-of-the-art radios and controls that you would expect in a uh, sophisticated commercial vessel. The aft-facing controls and helm station is vitally important, uh, remembering that they back up to a rig and they have to uh, have crane operations and crew getting on and off. The other thing I want to note is that when these vessels are laid up, all the manuals, all the uh, handheld radios, every little bit of equipment uh, that you need to go back to sea is still there, ready to be reactivated and uh, put back to work. The interior finish is not bad at all. They've got uh, strong AC. Uh, the engines are all the way aft in the hull, so they uh, don't have vibration and noise from the engines. Uh, the exhaust and the intakes are also all the way aft, more than 100 feet away. This vessel has a crew cabin on the main deck. That might be for actually taking somebody off a vessel that needs care. Um, it's got some uh, facilities on board for showers, heads. It's got a small serving galley up there and a place for snacks. In a conversion, I could see this area being repurposed as a uh, main salon with uh, bigger windows looking forward. Or it could even be an owner's suite. It's got this plenty of This vessel was that. built by Bro Brothers, and they are one of the uh, most renowned builders of fast crew supply vessels have been doing it for over 40 years. This crew area can be uh, easily converted over for yacht crew accommodations. I want to point out one of the great things about doing these conversions. Look, we're only dealing with the front 25% of this hull so far. And we're going to keep all that because it's useful for our mission. And now the rest of this space is available for us to build out for accommodations, for toys and tenders, for the helipad. Let's check it out. I'm used to inspecting steel hulls, and so the first impression I have is that uh, the metal is not coated, and there's no rust, and it looks new. On some of the vessels that I inspected, this midsection here was all tanks, and these were uh, water tanks for the rigs or mud tanks, and they were so large that you could actually cut right into them and make other crew cabins, or you could make a gym or, or walk-in uh, freezers and stores. So each boat is unique in the way that it has uh, its equipment, tankage, and systems laid out. But what they all have in common is that you'll see that the piping and the, all the electrical runs and the systems are completely accessible, very well labeled, uh, easy to maintain, easy to operate. This vessel is powered by 3516B Caterpillars that deliver 2,000 horsepower each. All these boats either have triples or quadruples, and they either go to 52-inch props or Hamilton jet drives. My immediate thought was too much horsepower, too much fuel burn. This doesn't make any sense. But then I saw the charts of the actual fuel burns on these boats, and if you go 12 knots, you're only burning about 50 gallons an hour. And that's probably better than a Viking Sportfish. Swift Ships very kindly gave me a tour of two of their vessels, a 200 foot fast cruise supply vessel and a partially finished 175 foot vessel. So behind me here, you can see the uh, deck house, the bridge on the 175 footer, which is about 60% built. And you see how they got the forward canted uh, windscreen on the bridge deck 
and the main accommodation block underneath it. Uh, what we're going to do on these conversions is we're going to take that bridge deck and move it further aft, but we'll keep this accommodation block. So on a conversion, we use this high load-bearing deck immediately after the deck house to add our accommodation block. So normally six guest cabins back here. So the advantage here is you don't have the crew space filled out with all the seating here. You've got your open overheads and you could go ahead and put in a galley here. You could put in an owner suite. You could have dining. And then going aft here, you go right into your main salon, if that's how you want to lay it out. Don't throw any snakes or alligators in here. Okay. Here we are in what would be the crew quarters. And it is ready for conversion. So this basically puts you a year and a half ahead versus a new build. You're also benefiting from old aluminum prices. This is new aluminum, but sold at old aluminum rates. On both sides of me here are what I was talking about before, large tanks here and then also after this next space are more aluminum tanks. That panel and the installation is valuable. That's all we have time for today, but keep your eye on this sector of the maritime industry because I believe we're gonna see some really interesting conversions uh, shaping up on these hulls. Mm -hmm.